I'm not afraid to admit that even after 10 years of building software, I still write code that makes me question my life choices. And sometimes when you need to ship fast, you have to sacrifice your integrity just to get something out the door. Or at least that's what I uh, like to tell myself. But anyways, it's not just me. It's every project, it's every company. Every developer does this, and the technical term for it is called tech debt. You sacrifice scalability to go fast, but you ultimately have to pay the price eventually. And that's exactly what I just did. I just cranked out a 164 file refactor, fixing some of the bad coding decisions that I made in my mobile application. So if you're new here, I've been building this app called The State of Health. It's basically an all-in-one workout and macro tracking tool built with React Native. It's still in its early days. We're only on version 1.4.4, which basically just means it's pretty new. Anyways, my mission is simple, to just build and have fun. That's really it. Anyways, when I started building this application, I wasn't really thinking about the future. I just wanted to get something out the door quick. And to be completely honest with you, I didn't think I'd be using it this much or I would be working on it uh, after all this time. And because of this, there wasn't much thought about the future of this project. And because of that, it led to some very questionable coding decisions. So let's go over what those questionable decisions are and hopefully this will help you not make the same ones. And it all starts with my abuse of local storage. When I first started developing this app, I was just vibe coding it out, me and GPT, and I was cramming everything into my Redux store, which by the way, the more that I use Redux, the more I realize I just absolutely hate it. It feels so unnecessarily overkill for most situations. You need a dispatcher, you need an action, you need a reducer. And every time I have to set up a new Redux store, it feels like I need to rewatch a 45 minute tutorial. But anyways, Redux rant aside, I used Redux for my global state management and I crammed everything into that store. Then for my store, I used Redux Persist to store everything into my local device storage. So every workout tracked, every meal logged, it was indefinitely persisted on device. Then after a couple weeks of building this, I suddenly decided that I wanted a more uh, remote solution or at the very least be able to save this data and perhaps pull it down on a different device. Maybe if a user logs in elsewhere or maybe one day create some sort of web dashboard where users can sort of visualize all of their workout data. So I came up with this extremely half-baked solution of marking each record from my local storage with an unsynced flag, and then once a day attempting to sync it to my Firebase database. And spoiler alert, that's a pretty bad idea and honestly not very scalable, but nonetheless, it worked and I was able to deploy and ship my MVP. However, after 150 days of tracking my workouts, I exported all of my locally persisted data to a JSON file and it was over 40,000 lines long, which is just uh, horrendously large and a terrible use of device storage and resources, especially when you're loading that data into memory into a global store like Redux. Now the reality is this data, matter of fact, like 99% of it doesn't need to be stored locally. And the better solution would be to store some of this data, like a handful of exercises, maybe the workout for the day, and then require a connection to query other pieces of data, like looking at your previous workouts. So my plan was to start over and do things right this time around. I started my refactor that ended up turning out to be 160 files of changes, where I began to replace my Redux store with Zustand, which is just a much more straightforward state management solution. I started to move away from Firebase and I ended up building out my own API using Postgres as my database. Node.js, Express, and then Prisma to create my API and coordinate saving and fetching records rather than saving all of them locally on device storage. So why did I decide to move away from Firebase? The reality is Firebase could just work for what I'm trying to do. It could be a great solution for saving data and then handling offline uh, data sync. But honestly, I really just hate the idea of being locked into a backend as a service vendor and I would much rather roll out my own backend for complete control and honestly it's just a lot more fun than using some 
pre-built solution. Also, I don't love the pricing model that Firebase has with its variable pricing as you scale. To me, it feels a lot better knowing that my backend costs me a fixed dollar amount each month, especially for a side project. And that is exactly why I went with a VPS. But before I dive into what a VPS is and how I'm using it, let me ask you a question. What's the idea that you've been sitting on and what's stopping you from launching it? Now for me, I'm so laser focused on building this mobile app, I haven't even had time to consider making a functional website for it. But that is exactly where Hosting or Horizons comes into play. It's an all-in-one AI partner tool. Basically, it's a singular tool that combines design, development, writing skills, and then integrates directly with popular platforms like Stripe, and Superbase. So let me show you how it works and how I was able to basically create an entire fitness tracking website with just a single prompt. I simply wrote out my request in the Hostinger Horizons chat window, and within a matter of seconds, Horizons was able to create this fully functioning all-in-one workout in macro tracking application. From there, I was able to refine my website with additional prompts, like changing the color theme and adding more useful user controls. And once I was done, I was able to instantly deploy with just a single click. The best part of using Horizons is that there is absolutely no coding required. Just describe your idea in one of the 80 plus languages and Horizons will bring it to life. You can manage your email, domain, and hosting all in one place. No need for third parties or complicated setups. It's an easy way to turn your idea into a real business. On top of that, Hostinger offers expert support anytime you need it, so you can get help 24 seven from their multilingual customer success team. So if all this sounds interesting to you, then I suggest you launch the idea that you've been sitting on today with Hostinger's Horizons and use my code Kenny10 at hostinger.com slash Kenny10 to get 10% off. And huge shout out to Hosting or Horizons for sponsoring this video. So back to my VPS. Now, if you don't know what a VPS is, it stands for Virtual Private Server. And it's basically your own slice of a real server. You get full control, you can install whatever you want, you can run whatever you need, and I purchased my VPS right on Hostinger for a fixed price of only $9.99 a month. And because you're fully managing your own VPS, it can get much more complicated than using a full out of the box backend as a service solution like Firebase. However, it gives you a lot more control and just makes you feel like a uh, real programmer. You're installing things via CLI and you're writing code with Vim. So anyways, after snagging my VPS, I started the migration process away from Firebase by setting up the infrastructure on this VPS. I installed Postgres as my database, I defined my schema for that database, and then I vibed out a script to copy all my data from my Firebase instance into my new Postgres instance. So with my new database set up and hosted on my VPS, I spun up a local express project to kick off the development of my new API. Now me, cursor, developed some of the initial endpoints such as fetching workout data and saving workout data. And I used Prisma to help with the development of my API. Now, it was the first time I used Prisma. I've always wanted to try it out. It's a popular ORM for JavaScript and TypeScript based projects. And basically what an ORM does is it's a tool that lets you interact with your database by using code instead of writing raw SQL queries by hand. It's essentially syntactic sugar on top of SQL queries. Now, I'm not ashamed to admit that I relied very heavily on AI to build out the back end of my application. It took some massaging and back and forth in a lot of cases, but it essentially wrote 95% of my code for my back end. So I got some core endpoints running, I confirmed that they were working, and then I finally started working on the client implementation. So back on the client, I started to strip out the old Firebase logic and local storage persistence. So now that when you open the app, we're no longer relying on persisted data and the Redux store. It just fetches data from my new API. And while it's loading, I coded this skeleton animation. Once the data is fetched, it then loads that data into my Zustin store where components can then subscribe to Zustin state for UI based updates. So a pretty standard approach for React based applications, calling an API, 
storing that data in local storage, and then subscribing at the component level for state updates. And overall, this just results in a much more cleaner and scalable implementation and no more 40,000 lines of Redux stores loaded into memory when the application is opened. Slowly but surely, I started to bang out all of the CRUD-based endpoints for my workout-related data, and then I stripped out the old Firebase sync logic and Redux implementation and eventually got to the point where my application was no longer relying on Firebase or Redux for the workout tracking features of my project. Now, a big part of my project is macro tracking, which I haven't touched yet. However, that will come in future iterations of this refactor. And now that a connection is required to save records because I am posting them directly to my API, I added things like loading states. So if something errors out, then a toast is shown uh, to let the user know that something failed. You know, good UI, UX, front end practices. So anyways, since I didn't want to lose all the offline functionality of just saving everything to local storage, I spent some time adding some offline first functionality for the core features around working out and logging your daily exercises. So I added some logic to persist only the 50 most recent exercises that a user has created. So these are things like barbell bench press, pull-ups, push-ups, etc. So after I finished the front end implementation, I finally deployed my API to my hosting or VPS. And after a lot of trial and error, trial and error, and even more trial and error, everything was finally live. Now I'm not fully migrated away from Firebase or Redux. However, this was a very good first step into uh, enhancing the architecture of my application and making it more future proof. Anyways, thank you so much for making it this far in the video. If you are interested in following my journey of building my stupid workout tracking application, then hit subscribe. If you want to check it out, it's on the App Store. If you want to steal the source code, feel free to do that. It's on GitHub. Steal the app. I don't care. Anyways, again, thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.